Hi, Emily, and welcome. I'm thrilled to have you as a guest on the Best of Women section podcast. Thank you. I always like to start by having you share your synopsis of the book with our listeners who may not have read When We Were Enemies yet. So could you tell us a bit what it's about? Absolutely. So it's a dual timeline. The 1943 timeline is during the summer, right before Italy switched sides and joined America in the alliance during World War II. And this is why When We Were Enemies. And our superstar, Vivian Snow, it's before she became famous. And she's working at an Italian POW camp in the United States. And then the present day timeline is her granddaughter, who now there's this generations of fame and she wants to be famous, but she runs a PR company and, and they're doing a documentary about Vivian's early life. And that documentary as they often do in these fun stories, uh, starts to reveal some secrets that the whole family doesn't really want revealed. I heard that this novel was inspired, at least in part, by your own family history. Could you tell us a little bit more about that and about the initial spark that made you think that's the story I want to tell? Yeah, I think I didn't have any idea I wanted to tell this story for quite some time. My father just made like an offhanded comment about how my grandmother worked at an Italian POW. I was like, what even is that? And so I didn't realize that during World War II, there were hundreds of POW camps where soldiers that were captured from Italy and from Germany were held over here in POW camps. And so my grandmother worked in one of these camps as a secretary. And while she was a secretary there, she became friends with an Italian priest and they continued writing to to each other for the rest of their lives. And he would draw her pictures that like she would keep forever and like little postcards and stuff like that. This is your seventh novel, but your first historical fiction novel. What made you decide to venture into this genre? Yes, I tiptoed into it with my last book because it was about my it's always my family, my poor family. They had, yeah, that I would be writing about them one year. But I wrote a little bit about the 20s last time, and I've always loved history. I have a minor in history. It's always been something that I felt fascinating. I love seeing the fact that we're all the same. I think that's why I like classic literature for the exact same reason. So there's always those moments that just click into my mind, and I'm like, I want to know more about that. So it's been really fun to explore those things love research. Like I was that weird kid that was like, yes, I get to do a research paper. So now I get to do that as my job. That's a great segue into my next question, because as our regular listeners know, my favorite part of the writing process is research. And I love hearing about how authors go about it. So what was your research process like for when we were enemies? Did you have any favorite sources or did you get to travel? Things like that? Yeah, I did travel down to uh, Camp Atterbury is Indiana. That's where the POW camp is based. Like the story is based on that POW camp. There's still a camp there, but it's like a training facility. I actually ended up somebody that I knew had trained there and I posted about and he's like, why are you posting about Camp Atterbury? But they have a chapel down there, which is part of the story is that the POWs built this chapel because part of the Geneva Convention was that they could practice their religion in whatever way they seemed, they deemed fit. And and so the the Italians came together and they built tiny little chapel together out of like spare parts, basically. And so we went and we visited that chapel, took pictures, talked to the people there, visited the town. So I think that was probably the highlight of taking my research that I had done through like resources, books, internet, talking to people, and then taking it and really seeing what that looked like. It was a nice culmination. I want to take a step back for a moment because I love asking authors how they became authors because rarely is the path a direct one. I read that you were first an educator and that maybe a help scare led to you writing and publishing novels. Can you tell us a bit more about your path to becoming a novelist? Sure. Yeah. So I never thought I, some kids grow up and you hear that beautiful story of I knew I wanted to be this and 
not I. When I was younger, in first grade, there was a little girl who had beautiful handwriting. And I will confess right here on this podcast that I stole that little girl's pencil because I thought her pencil made it that she had such beautiful handwriting. Uh, I name on the board for it. Which then I went in a race in a moment of rebellion. So then I got a check mark. Anyway, so that was my life of crime that led me to be a writer. But so I felt like I never would be something like. That. But then I was an educator. I taught a writing workshop class for like gifted and talented students from third to fifth grade, and just seeing their imagination and their courage uh, was really inspiring for me. I would write at the same time as them. And then we would all share our writing with each other. And I just caught the bug at that point, like of wanting to put my words down on paper. But I never really thought I would share them with anyone. This is a secret, but no longer. I did share them on the internet when I wrote Jane Austen fanfic under a fictional name, but I didn't have courage to share it. So then I had a few children and I had a three-month-old and a one-year-old at home, and I was diagnosed with cancer. And it was an aggressive form of a soft tissue sarcoma. And I was given some kind of scary statistics about my chances of turning 30. So when I turned 30, I was like, dang, 100 years ago, I'd be dead. There's no way without medical intervention that I would be here. And so it felt like I had been given this gift it's making me emotional today. Here are years that you have been given back that really like maybe weren't yours. And so I was like, what am I going to do with this time? So I decided I would make some goals. My goals was to write a manuscript. Once again, I never thought it would get published. I was like, I just got to write it beginning to end. I'm just going to write it. And it just took off from there. It took me three years to write Wreckage, which was my first book. And then it took me another year and a half to figure out how to edit it and how to every step in the process. And that eventually got me to here. Had an interesting winding path, but a beautiful story. Oh. Well, drawing from your personal experience and the journey that led you to where you are now, what one piece of advice do you think is most important for writers? To just write. Like, you just got to write. Like, we can put it off. We can say, oh, I'll do it when I have more time. I'll do it when my kids are older. I wrote Wreckage while I was nursing my daughter. Like, I would just one hand as much as I could because it's the only time I had three little boys and then a little tiny baby. It was the only time that I had that I could write. And so for me, it was a joy. Like, it was the creative energy that brought joy to my life was being able to write. And I think that there are so many ways that we can convince ourselves that it's not our time here. And maybe it's not your time yet to publish, but that doesn't mean it's not your time to start. You can start something or you can continue something. It doesn't have to be your time to be at the finished product. I am a nine-month-old right now, and I am having a very hard time imagining writing while reading. So that is highly impressive. It was my escape. It was really literally the only time I had trained my children to leave me alone during the time. So it was like my one quiet time. I can see that. Yeah. I think authors always have the best reading suggestions. I'd love to hear about your reading world. What are you reading right now that you'd recommend? Gosh, I am so into nonfiction lately. I feel like a rebel as a fiction writer. I'm reading a lot of nonfiction. So I I did just read Hint of Light by Kristen Kiska, I think is how you say her last name. Very wonderful. So that was the last fiction I read, but nonfiction, I read a, a book a week at least. I just read The the Courage to be Disliked, which was very interesting. I enjoyed that one. And I just read right after that Blood, like Orange Blood Night, I think is what it was called. Yeah, Once Memoir. And then the other one is just like a philosophy kind of a book. Are you working on something right now? Are you about? I am. 
Yeah, I think it's okay if I talk about it because it's been official for a while, though we haven't done like a big announcement. So let's just say if you like when your enemies, you're going to have some more from that world coming up soon. Hmm. Intriguing. Yeah. Too much away, but it gets us curious. Yes, yes. I hope so. I'm really excited. It's the first time that I have done something derivative of another book that I've written. It's definitely, it's a companion piece rather than a exact sequel, but I, it's been very interesting staying in a world for this long. Interesting. So I'm curious, since you've done so many books that are contemporary and now you're going in a bit to the historical fiction side, what are the differences in writing the two? research (laughs) you know what i do and i don't even know if this is a valid method or not is i love old films so the one that i'm writing right now it goes through multiple different decades what i've been doing is i will binge tons of old films from that youtube really i do that too i'll go and i'll watch movies from that time period i'll go and watch actual footage from that time period and then i'll sit down to write I think the other thing is I've had to be willing to, like I do that thing, I know a lot of writers do it, where when I don't know what I'm going to put in for research, I just put like a QQQ so I know to go back later and specify. And for a long time in my writing, I wanted to get the research before I did that. And this book, I've had to just let go and be like, I know I'll get that information. I'm going to write as much as I can. And just tell myself, you need to come back here. So trusting myself in that has been huge for me. And it has made it so I can write much faster. I can stay in the head of my character and not be like popping out to go Google something all of the time. I am definitely the writer that could stay in the research phase forever. But your love of historical films makes a lot of sense knowing the Hollywood connection in this novel. Yes. And that's been very fascinating for me because like I perform, so I'm an improviser. It's not Hollywood or anywhere close. But one thing that I really came to have come to understand doing this week after week and being on stage is like how much is delightful and creative like writing, but it's also a job. And so it's been very interesting to delve into that, the multiple layers of that, of like how this looks so glamorous on the outside, but the end of it. These people are doing their job. This is part of an industry. It's competitive and it's multifaceted. So that's been really fun for me to look into. Finally, I want to share how people can find you. What is your website and where do you like to hang out on social media? Yeah, I'm just emilybleaker.com and I am on Facebook and Instagram just under Emily Bleeker. And then I'm on TikTok too. So if you want to see me, talk at you more that's where you go before we wrap up is there anything else you wanted to talk about that we haven't covered yet nope i'm really excited for i'm going to my first conference for a women's fiction conference in a few weeks really excited about that that's in chicago in chicago which is where there oh i'm from chicago too we're in uptown Okay. okay awesome okay so you're right we're down there all the time. So my husband does is at Piper's Alley quite a bit because he's. In- I'll see you at the conference later this month. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you again for joining us on the podcast and sharing your book and your experience as an author with our listeners. It was a real pleasure chatting with you. It was wonderful. Thank you for having me.